Hey there and welcome back to Utility Sports. And this video is going to be a little different. We are going to be talking about our favorite NFL draft prospects for the 2021 NFL draft. And this is not necessarily who we think will be the best players coming out of this draft. It's just the favorite prospects to watch or you know, just as a whole who we like. So we're going to go actually position by position. First off, we will look at the quarterback position, obviously the most important position on the field. And for me personally, I do like Trevor Lawrence. I am a Jags fan. I do really, really like Trevor Lawrence. He is my favorite prospect in the class. Before we, before we even had a shot at possibly getting him, he was my favorite. I really watch. I really enjoy watching Trevor Lawrence play. And for me personally, looking at the rest of the list, I do kind of like Trey Lance. I, I, I think he's a very fun prospect to watch coming from North Dakota State. I think he has a very lively arm. And I mean, for the most part, I, I don't really like any of the other quarterback prospects as a whole, but I do like Trevor Lawrence and Trey Lance to an extent. But I mean, Justin Fields, don't get me wrong. He is kind of fun to watch, but I don't particularly like him as a whole. And now, Sheldon, who do you like from this quarterback group? Yeah, for those of you who don't know uh, our channel too much, you might not know that I'm not a huge quarterback advocate a lot of the time. I'm a New York Jets fan, so I guess you could probably understand as to why I tend to not get as excited about the quarterback position. I, I am kind of in that same boat with you about Trevor Lawrence, where you are with Trey Lance, where like I enjoy watching him. I don't know if I necessarily like him uh, to the fullest extent, but I, I'm definitely like more positively neutral to him uh, than I am a lot of the other guys in this class. But I think my favorite QB to watch is actually Sam Ellinger uh, out of Texas. I do kind of like watching the Longhorns play. Uh, I know that's, you know, a little weird. He's not going to be a great NFL product or anything like that. I don't believe that he will be, but I do just enjoy watching him uh, throw the football. And, and I did like watching him play for the Texas Longhorns. So that's, that's kind of the QB that I like to watch. But again, I don't think he's going to be uh, a real guy that's going to play into uh, what we're seeing here in the NFL draft too much. Absolutely. I, I agree. And for, there's just certain reasons why you like prospects and you can't always pinpoint them. So that, that's kind of the funny part in all of this. But now we're going to move to the running back position. And now this is going to flip to more of the position that you like more. Me personally, I'm not the biggest running back fan in, in terms of this draft class individually. I do like Kenneth Gainwell. He was one of my favorite guys to actually just watch on film. I think Najee Harris is a pretty exciting prospect as well. But I, I'm not a, a super big fan girl of him considering he went to Alabama. But I do like Gainwell, and I also like Trey Sermon. Um, I also do like uh, Chuba Hubbard from Oklahoma State. I love that he was a complete faller on draft boards. I, I think this is kind of a fun story. He was a guy that going into the season should have been the first running back probably taken, if not the second running back. But as you can see now on a lot of people's big boards, he is he very well could be third, fourth, or possibly fall even to the fifth round. I don't think the fifth round's likely. I think third or fourth round is more where you're going to see him selected. Yeah, that's definitely uh, an interesting situation there with Hubbard. And for me, like you had mentioned, this is the position that I tend to have a little bit more excitement than you come the NFL draft. I really do like the running back position. Uh, Kenneth Gainwell is someone you had really turned my eyes to a lot out of Memphis. He is actually my third favorite running back in this class just to watch. Actually, my fourth, I'd say. I do like Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne, I thought, was going to be my favorite in this class. I really liked him last year at Clemson. This year, a little bit of a drop-off kind of raised some red flags for me, and I, I just have backed off of that train a little bit, too, with some of the hype that's around him coming into the NFL draft. The two guys that are 1-2 on my board, uh, and there's very little separation between the two of them, are Michael Carter and Javante Williams, the combo backs from North Carolina, the UNC Tar Heel backs. I really like watching these guys play Michael Carter. I love his change of direction. I like his uh, ability to run outside the tackles, inside the tackles. I think he can run physically. Both of them are very compact. Look at like Javante Williams, they're 5'10", 220, and Michael Carter, 5'8", 202. These guys are bulky backs that are going to be able to, you know, probably not be lead backs early on in their career, but I think they're going to be used as spell backs. And I think that they both give you a lot of different options as pass catchers guys who can uh, extend plays. I, I really like Javante Williams. I think Javante Williams will be the better of the two, but I think Michael Carter is my favorite to actually watch uh, on film. Just looking at the way he changes direction out in open space. I think he can run through guys as well. He's, he's a fun player to watch for me. 
And as we saw with the senior bowl, Michael Carter was one of the more explosive players. He was one of the only players that could really break out a big run of all the running backs that were there at the senior bowl. So that's just something to note with that. And now we jump to wide receiver and now we're going to see flip flop again, where I tend to like more wide receivers than uh, my counterpart Sheldon here. I love Jamar chase. I'm an LSU fan. i really love his game. He, he's the most exciting college receiver I've ever seen. And especially that 2019, which was just an amazing year for LSU football. Really love watching him there. Really unfortunate that he opted out, but I think it was the best career move just in case, um, you know, he could have a down year with a quarterback situation that they were rotating between three guys during the LSU season. Another guy I like, another LSU product, Terrace Marshall, guy that played partway through the season. And we obviously saw the, those quarterback flippings really hurt Terrace Marshall. Obviously, he wasn't getting the consistent targets he probably would have seen had he had Joe Burrow still. But Terrace Marshall is my, my next guy. I also love Rashad Bateman. I absolutely love his game. And I think he could have been a top 15 prospect had he opted out before the season. So um, a, a, lot of, a lot of excitement around this wide receiver class. I also like Kadarius Toney. I think he's the most explosive wide receiver in terms of, you know, after the catch, you could argue uh, Jalen Waddell. I think they're very, very close. Maybe Waddle's a little more explosive, but Kadarius Toney is not far behind as a whole. Really, really fun to watch. And kind of looking at the rest of it. I also do like Tylen Wallace. I, I've watched a lot of Oklahoma State over the last couple of years. Tylen Wallace is a is an extremely fun wide receiver to watch. Yeah, like you had mentioned, this is kind of the flip flop position here. You really do like the passing game a lot more than I feel like I do. Uh, wide receiver really being your calling card, I think that's really one of your biggest strengths too when you're evaluating uh, prospects. I think that ultimately you really see the wide receiver position uh, really well uh, with a lot of different you know facets, looking at athleticism ability to route run and that being Jamar Chase I think uh, you had opened my eyes to him last year uh, during Joe Burrow's uh, magnificent season there at LSU uh, he's not my favorite wide receiver in the class but I do really like him I think he brings a lot in the short to intermediate route running game uh, and I think that he's going to be a really good player in the NFL but my favorite wide receiver in this class to watch is actually Shai Smith out of South Carolina the Gamecock he played really well at the senior bowl I think he's a guy who could actually create quite a bit after the catch. And I think he's a little bit under the radar. I, I, you know, South Carolina. Yeah. You see how low he is down here on the big board at pick 135 projected, but I really like him. You know, he's a guy who can work out of the slot. I think he can really stretch the field up the seam. And I, I just, I, I really like watching him. I don't know if there's a little bit of bias with his name. I think his name is pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie about that. Uh, but he's, he's one guy that I'm really excited about in this wide receiver uh, class here. And even though I don't think he's going to be the best wide receiver, uh, for sure, he's for sure not going to be, but I just do really enjoy watching him play. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting that you, you bring that up. Another guy I do want to make note of, because I, I think Shai Smith was absolutely phenomenal at the senior bowl, but arguably the best receiver there was, was Des Fitzpatrick. I'm very interested to see if he climbs up boards after his performance, he was the, to me, the best looking wide receiver at the senior bowl. So this is a guy you need to keep your eye on six, two receiver, good size, good length as a whole. And I think he could be a guy that obviously benefits the most from that senior bowl. So that will conclude the wide receivers. Let's move on to the tight end position, which for us personally, we have not been super, super excited outside of me. Absolutely loving Cal Pitts. I, I think he's a phenomenal talent. I really love watching him play at the University of Florida, playing for the for the Gators. I, I think that this is going to be one of the most dynamic tight ends in the entire NFL for years and years to come. I very well think that after a couple of seasons, he could possibly be a top three tight end. He has that much talent. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking at too. There's not a specific tight end that I necessarily love, like in terms of, hey, this guy could be one of my favorite players from the class. But looking at Kyle Pitts, I can see the talent, the ability for him to play all over the field. I think he's going to be a special player in the NFL as well. Someone who can line up in a variety of ways. I've mentioned this multiple times on the channel, but I, I look at him similarly to what we saw with a young Jimmy Graham in New Orleans. Not necessarily, you know, the same physical stature and, and not necessarily the same athleticism, but the ability to line up all over the place, uh, uh, impact the game from out of the slot, out wide. Uh, obviously Jimmy Graham had his issues with the Saints when it came to contract negotiations because of how often he was being used at positions other than the tight end spot and I think Kyle Pitts is going to have kind of that same career trajectory early on at least 
Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Now we go to a position that not a lot of people like to talk about or get excited about, and that's the offensive line as a whole. Of the offensive line positions, obviously the tackle is the most exciting part, especially to me watching a guy do a kick slide. It's beautiful. It's poetry. For me personally, I do. I kind of like Panay Sewell, but for me personally, I, I love watching Rashawn Slater. I think he's going to be a fantastic tackle in the league. Once again, I want to preface, these aren't the guys that we think necessarily are the best at their positions. It's just the guys that we naturally gravitate towards. And for me, it's Rashawn Slater. Yeah, for me at this tackle spot, it is Panay Sewell. Rashawn Slater is really fun, though. Uh, his versatility on that offensive line uh, is something I really uh, enjoy. And that'll kind of bring us into the interior offensive lineman, too. One guy I really like in that spot is uh, Elijah Vera Tucker. I think that uh, his versatility at USC it was able to kick out to offensive tackle when they needed him to, showed his ability to play at a high level at a whole bunch of different positions for USC. That's something that's really valuable to me. You never know on a Sunday when you're going to need to have your guard play tackle, your tackle play guard, whatever you need to do to really you know try and bolster your team when a, when a big man goes down up front. And I think that that kind of versatility really bodes well. And I also really like Wyatt Davis. As you guys can tell, I'm really into the run game. I really like guys who can pave holes for the running backs, get to the second and third level. And I think Wyatt Davis is going to be a guy that can do that at the next level. Obviously, he had an injury uh, in the championship game. But I, I still think that all in all, he's going to be a good player. And I enjoy watching him at that position. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some other guys. I really like Deontay Brown as well. Um, looking at it as a whole, there, there's not a ton of interior offensive linemen until I really can dive deeper into the tape on, on some of these guys. I, I cannot you know, truthfully give, you know, who I really, really like until seeing some extensive tape, but now we are going to look at the interior defensive line. There's a couple of nice guys that, that are here at this point. Um, a, a guy that has fallen a lot. And generally I, I liked some of those guys that ended up falling during the year. Marvin Wilson is one of those guys that I do like. I also like Christian Barmore. I, I, I am an LSU fan, but I can recognize game. It was really, really fun to watch Christian Barmore, especially during the championship game. I think he's a phenomenal talent. Really, really fun to watch for me. Yeah, Barmore really shined, especially down the end of that season for Alabama. I think he really helped his draft stock in a lot of ways. And for me, uh, at this position, the guy that really stands out to me is Jay Tefele. I'm going to stick with USC here uh, and choose another guy from USC with Jay Tefele. He's, I don't know, he's just really exciting to me. I think he brings in good athleticism at the position. I think he's going to be able to get after the QB impact, the run game. Uh, and all, all in all, I think part of it might be his name as well. I, I tend to have a gravity towards guys with names that I uh, find a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun. Um, so I, that might be part of it. Like, obviously, you've mentioned this multiple times already that there's just, you know, non explicit reasons on why we start, like start to like certain guys. Uh, and it's just something obviously you can't let it actually impact how you look at players uh, and how you grade them. But in terms of liking them, that is part of why I like J2 Fele. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think a lot of people would agree with that, that idea that sometimes the names are really fun. Um, speaking of fun names, we have a couple of fun ones here with uh, Joseph Osai, Quiddy Pake, very, very interesting names, Aziz Oshalari, really interesting names. But for me personally, I love Gregory Rose Russo. He is just physically imposing human being. Um, I, I think he's one of those, one of those guys that could be really, really fun to watch at the next level. Um, his tape was really interesting. Another guy I like is Quincy Roche. He was a transfer that ended up at Miami. And I, I really like watching him as well. So I really do like the Miami edges from this year. And I also like Aziz Ojolari. Why? Once again, kind of because of that name thing. I, I do like watching his film, but like how cool of a name is Aziz Ojolari? I, I think we got to appreciate that for a second. Yeah, that is a really sweet name. And I'm not surprised here too, that you have two Miami edges here on your uh, favorites. I do stick with you though. They're on the Gregory Russo uh, thing. I, especially the fact that he's kind of slid down some boards lately at the start of the year, we saw him in a lot of top tens. The fact that he slid down, I know you definitely like that. And I, I've kind of grown to, you know, be a little bit more of a supporter for him. I think his raw talent uh, could be something that's really worth grabbing his athletic frame. Uh, the physicality he has at that position, I think, uh, is drawing me toward him. But he's actually not my favorite edge in this class. Mine is Victor Demukeji out of Duke. He's going to be down there a little bit. Yeah, we see him there at rank 82. That's actually probably one of the higher uh, volumes I've seen him. Uh, I think that he's going to be an interesting 3-4 edge uh, for a lot of different teams. I think if he lands in a situation like maybe Baltimore or Pittsburgh, 
uh, one of these places that, you know, kind of has a system in place with some other good players on that defense. He could actually be a guy that comes in and within the first two years starts to impact games. Uh, and I'm hoping he lands in a situation where we get to see him a little bit more. It's kind of hard to see, you know, do guys rise up into a first or second round type of player often, especially at those edge positions. Uh, but I, I really like what he brings. I, I like his athleticism. And again, it might be part of the name. His name is pretty awesome, in my opinion, with Victor Dimukeji. Uh, so I don't know. That might be playing into it a little bit. But I, I just like what I see out of him, too, uh, watching the tape. Absolutely. Now we are going to move to the linebacker position. There's a couple of interesting guys here at the top. I, I think that we both like Micah Parsons and what he brings versatility at that linebacker spot. He pretty much wherever he is drafted, he will be a fit in my opinion. I, I think he is a good linebacker in a four, three or three, four scheme, whatever, whatever the team chooses to run more often. Um, I, I think that he is a phenomenal talent, really, really explosive at that linebacker spot he used to play defensive end. Now he's at the linebacker position and he's really shining. Um, another guy I do like is Jabril Cox. Why? LSU guy came from North Dakota State on a transfer and was that an actual true leader on that defense despite being a transfer from that North Dakota State. I, I love Jabril Cox. Yeah, there's no surprise there again with your LSU boys. Uh, go Tigers uh, for you, obviously. And uh, for me, a guy that I really like here is Jeremiah Wusu koromoa I think that he's a very technically sound linebacker. I think he's a guy who's going to make plays. I think he's smart, uh, really IQ uh, type of player. And I, I really tend to like that at the linebacker position. I grew up watching Bart Scott, uh, Demario Davis when he was young, uh, and, and a whole bunch of linebackers like that, you know, Calvin Pace, uh, and, and just some edges like that too. That, I don't know, just that that IQ aspect of the game has really stuck with me. And I think that Jeremiah Wusu koromo is someone who shows that. Uh, and I think that's a big part of why I like him and what he brings out of Notre Dame. And he's a big part of what they do there as well. We saw him kind of fly up boards after their uh, win over Clemson. Uh, and that's really when I started to take like, some, like real notice of him as an NFL prospect. I think he's going to be a really good player in the NFL, but I, I like him uh, for some of the other reasons I'd mentioned. Absolutely. And I think he's going to be a true leader on the defense one day. Now looking at the cornerback position, this is one that's a little more spotty for, I, I believe both of us, for me personally, I do like Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech. I, I do like the Hokies. So um, Caleb Farley is, is an interesting prospect. Obviously, he's not been playing the position for very long. He has truly had one good season at that cornerback spot. So that makes people a little wary of his of his 2019 season, ultimately. But I, I think he, he's a really fun prospect to watch. And for me personally, I also just like Asante Samuel Jr., considering Watching his dad was so, so fun. And I, I think that this is this is going to be a, a little bit of a later riser for me in terms of prospects that I like. I, I do enjoy watching his film, though. Yeah, there's uh, for, the, for you, I know you enjoy the juniors quite a bit. Last year, Antoine Winfield Jr. was probably one of your favorites uh, in the class. He's shown he's been a really good safety as well. And, and you had noticed that, too, that he had a lot of skills that were going to translate to the NFL. Uh, but I do think you have a slight bias towards some of these juniors possibly. Uh, but for me uh, at this cornerback position, it is very spotty. Uh, I think if, if they ought to Malifinwu would maybe be a guy that I like uh, partially because of the name he played for Syracuse. Uh, I think he has some potential to maybe switch to uh, a safety as well. Something that his brother Obi Malifinwu had done in the NFL. And I just think that's pretty exciting uh, in a lot of different ways. There's not, not that he's going to be a great cornerback or anything like that. I think it's just coming down to, again, you know, I enjoy watching him. I enjoyed watching his film. And I think that's uh, really kind of the extent to it at the cornerback position for me. Yeah, I, I would agree. And I, I think as the draft process goes on, we, we will probably fall in love with more, more guys, but now looking here at the safety position for me personally, I have two guys that I, I am somewhat a little biased towards. I do like watching Trayvon Merrig. He is super fun to watch. He's an aggressive tackler. I really think that he he does translate well to the NFL. I think he will be the best safety from this class from what I've seen thus far. And I also do like Richard LeCount the third. I enjoyed watching him at Georgia, despite Georgia being a rival of LSU. I think he is a super fun fi safety to watch. Yeah, there's your inherent bias then again with the third. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but for me, the safety position again is pretty thin. I think Andre Sisco, another Syracuse kid, uh, but again, I'm not really in love with that. I think corner and safety are actually two of the weaker positions in terms of 
what I like uh, in this draft, not necessarily their week overall. I, I think that there's some real NFL starters in these positions, but in terms of what I've really enjoyed watching so far this year, uh, when it comes to film and some of these players, I just haven't really fallen in love with a lot of these guys. Last year, like I, you know how much I had fallen in love with some of the corners and, and safeties in last year's class. I really love Jeremy Chin. Uh, I did like Antoine Winfield Jr. as well with you, and I had liked, uh, I loved Noeg Benogany. He was actually my favorite player in the class last year. Uh, landed against uh, for my rival uh, Dolphins, which is unfortunate uh, because I don't really get to like him as much as maybe I would hope. So Austin, that kind of makes me wonder who's your favorite player in the class overall. I was actually just going to prompt you with this. I, I swear to you that before we were going to conclude, I was going to ask you who is your favorite overall prospect? Well, for me personally, I do have a bias towards Jamar Chase. He was my favorite in the 2019 season, and that carried through despite the opt-out. I have enough of a burn memory of Jamar Chase to the point where he is still my favorite prospect despite not seeing him for an entire year. <laughs> yeah, the, the 20 touchdowns he scored for LSU. <laughs> like, yeah, your, your sweat for LSU was undeniable, um, and <laughs> that's, that's not surprising to me. Um, for me, I think my favorite is probably Michael Carter um, from UNC, which is, I don't know, for those of you that don't know, I'm a Dayton fan. Uh, so not having a Dayton player, I, I mean, Dayton football is really, really subpar in a lot of ways. So I, I kind of have to settle with players from other schools. So Michael Carter is kind of that for me. Uh, but Javante Williams is a really close second. I, I love the running back duo. And the, I think, you know, honestly, if they probably didn't play together at the same school, I don't know how much I'd love each of them individually. But the fact that they tag team the running back position made it a lot more fun for me watching this team. Uh, so I think that's going to be a big part of, of my reasoning there. But yeah, those were those were the guys I really have fallen in love with in this class so far. All right. Thanks guys for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the video, just considering it was something different, something a little more personable. And so we had so much fun making this. We hope that you stick around to the channel, subscribe to it. Also leave a like if you did enjoy what you saw today. We cannot wait to see you in the next video.